Welcome back for more. Let's play Magna Carta 2. Last time we started moving through the undersea uh, cavern. Tunnel? Tunnel. Undersea tunnel. <laughs> and uh, we showed off all of Zephy's uh, skills that I wanted to show. Well, I can't really show Asuna because uh, nobody's... I guess I could have used it on the paralysis, but yeah. And I don't have anybody to revive yet. Over 1,000 years of history is written on these monuments to Strauss. If you read the monuments while holding the token, they will light up in response. Which means, when all five of these monuments light up, the secret door will open. Easy, right? Why didn't you tell us about this before? I didn't know about it before. Even among the Mare, only a handful know about this place. The chief told Zephy about it because she trusts her. I'll have to thank the chieftain for her faith. Alrighty, so we just have to walk up to these things and talk to them. Uh, anyways, let's research the Strauss tombstone. Uh, the sign appeared to with thunder from the east, the sunrise, and declares the beginning. So, the east is this one! A new race came across the sea from the far east. Oh, Carta, your body's carrying a shining, wondrous jewel. Your own mighty race shall you ruin. From the far east. The arrival of other tribes caused a war. The unlucky star appeared with the west at sunset. The true dark world. Gee, I wonder where we have to go now. The west. Go over here. Signs become reality and the big, big war began. Dire Karta was now the ruler of the land and all tribes faced extinction. Turn your eyes toward the darkness, though you are crushed with, doubt, with despair. Rich souls shine. Stars in the south glare. 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 Glore. Gore! Suddenly a hero born of Carta and human appeared, building, built a floating fortress and expelled Carta. Go thou north to where our king is. Step into royal city, where which draws the miracle Aurora. Aurora Borealis. Oh god, I can't remember the last time I've seen that. The scars of a protracted war, a world that is returned to the ashes and covered in the shadow of despair. The living succumb to the allure of death. True light is in the four monuments. Open the core gate and touch the eternal history. Boop. See the rays that begin uh, the bring fertility and prosperity to the dark land. It is the light of the hero's life. Lonsheim's oasis may it last forever. Well, there we go. Oh, wrong way. Well, there we go. <laughs> Ah, oh, big shiny crystal, and we're going to get a lot more story. Yay, and I won't have to read it. Thank you. Ooh, treasure chests. No, story. So, this is where the Mari store their records. Crystals, eh? I take it that the Mari people store their records inside of these. Uh, uh, didn't she just tell you this? Oh my god. Yeah. They store the information inside the crystals by converting them into Khan. Let's start searching them right away. Uh, the thing is, the records are written in ancient to keep them from being stolen. Ancient is a lot like the old Mari dialect that we used to use, so all Mari can use the language. I'm the only one here who can read them. Wow, you can read ancient, huh? I just might have to rethink my opinion of you. Just leave it to me. I'll translate for you. We're counting on you. Oh, look. Here's one about those possessing common. Blood ties to Magna Carta. Could you skip to the part dealing with the Magna Carta bloodline and read just that? Sure. Just a sec. I'll try reading from this part. However, it is not the case that all those born of mixed human Carta parents possess a comet. On the contrary, it is exceedingly rare for descendants of those bloodlines to be born possessing a comet. 
the reason the common of those of mixed heritage outstrips those of the Carta is because they mature. The limits of the common of the Carta are set from the time they are born. In the case of those of mixed heritage, their common undergoes maturation until that person stops growing at roughly age 18. However, in those who have endured especially harsh environments, the common is sometimes strengthened by leaps and bounds. Ah, so that's why Shuenzite was waiting for my common to mature. I think you're right. Furthermore, these subjects possess a significant trait. Like the Carta, they do not die unless their common is destroyed. Unlike humans, they do not die unless their common is destroyed, even if they suffer an otherwise fatal wound. Hmm... You know, the Sentinels also have that trait. You're right. I wonder if the Sentinels also have something to do with the Carta. However, unlike the Carta, those who are of mixed heritage are unable to absorb the Khan of living things. In comparison to the vessels that house vast quantities of Khan, the amount of Khan they inherently possess tends to be relatively small. It has been speculated that if they were to have been born with a sufficient amount of Khan to fill their common, they would have been terrifying beings indeed. What about Strauss then? He was perfect, no matter how you look at it, right? The next record is entitled, Ill Omens, the Doom Seeds. I'll try to read it for you. Please do, Celestine. Are Doom Seeds truly the source of a catastrophe that will destroy the world? It is true that when Doom Seeds fall, crops have difficulty ripening, and the efficacy of wizardry or commons either disappears or weakens. However, it has been determined through studies that the stories of people weakening and dying when exposed to seedfall are unfounded rumors. Take a close look at the available recorded phenomena. Anyone familiar with history should spot it. They should notice that our environment is identical to what existed prior to La Strada. We who are alive today merely accept an excess of bounty from La Strada. Does no one realize this? The Seedfall is a warning bell from nature in response to humanity's profligate, one might say egotistical, use of Khan. At present, the word agriculture has fallen out of use. However, it is said that prior to the Great Carta War, humanity was required to till the earth to obtain our food. In the era before the appearance of Lestrada, human wizardry was capable of little more than lighting a candle. The humans who lived before then were no match for Cardas who could throw gouts of flame. The data clearly shows that the rapid advances in human wizardry all occurred after the appearance of Lestrada. It's almost like they're saying that the Doom Seeds aren't a bad thing at all. I have absolutely no idea what the heck they're saying. Well, I guess all this might be a little over your head. Hey, you're making fun of me, aren't you? Now that I have my memory back, it's like I have more facts at my disposal, too. It's opposite of how things used to be, huh? Burned! And it's funny because he's a fire wizard. Nobody asked you. What's the next one? The next is wars. Curious similarities. I wonder what the similarities are. Beats me. I can't read a word of that. Sorry, Celestine, but keep trying to read it for us. Okay, let's see. 800 years of peace came to an end as two wars occurred in Lantheim. The first was the Avis War, which ended with the destruction of Avisburg, the land of the Avis. The second was the Ruhalt Civil War, which broke out in Ruhalt. A person called Tots invaded Avisburg using a monster weapon called the Demon. Tens of thousands of Avis lost their lives as a result. 
the handful of Avi survivors lost their country, and were forced to live from then on as a wandering people. Not much is known about the Todd's person. Not even how or where he obtained the monster weapon they called the Demon. History was never my strong suit, but I had heard that the royal forces had assisted Avisburg, but suffered a crushing defeat. The Demon annihilated the Avisburg forces. Also, witness accounts say that the demon's abilities and appearance strangely resembled that of the Guardian, which existed in the time of the Great Carta War. The Guardian? Celestine, please keep reading. As for the man who started the war, Tot suddenly went into hiding one day. Hostilities completely stopped, and the war came to a sudden and unexpected close. Then, 150 years after the end of the Avis War, war broke out again, this time in Ruhalt. This is known as the Ruhalt Civil War. This was a rebellion begun by a human aristocrat named Srots, who was plotting to depose the royal family, which was eventually put down by the royal forces. This war also claimed tens of thousands of victims. However, Srots, the ringleader who started the rebellion disappeared and was never found. And it is said that Srots used a monster weapon called the Shadow that resembled the Guardian to carry out his atrocities. Tots and Srots, Demon and Shadow? That's a strange similarity, all right! There aren't many accurate contemporary records of the war remaining, but they say that the battleground areas were scorched, and the Lonsheim Royal Forces troops sent there faced a hard fight. Plus, it seems that both of the ringleaders who caused these wars somehow managed to disappear. They have an awful lot in common with the war we're in now. It's strange. It almost sounds like there's been somebody like Schwinzite every 150 years or so. The monster weapons written of here might be the same type as the Sentinels. Aw, oh, come on. Don't tell me that Tots and Srots are Shuenzite's ancestors. It's strange, all right. It's more like they are Shuenzite himself. <laughs> no way! Humans don't live that long. When I was assigned to protect Avi's traders some time ago, I asked the Avi's folk about Tars. They said that Tars persistently targeted a young man who was risking his life to defend Avisburg. In the end, the young man was captured, but immediately afterwards there was a ceasefire and the Doom Seed stopped falling. You're saying that the young man was a Magna Carta? Even the way that the Seed Fall completely stopped after the war ended is the same. It's likely that in each case, he found the Magna Carta and sacrificed him. But why was it necessary to start a war? The world would be saved if he simply sacrificed the Magna Carta, right? Schwinzite said something like, I caused this war to force the Magna Carta to mature. But there seems to be more to it than that. I concur. There must be a reason behind the other commonality, that monster weapons were used. For now, let's go back to Kotamare. We need to digest all this information. There has to be some ulterior motive. Well, now that all that annoying story is out of the way, we can open these treasure chests. Yay. Rod of Miracle. Didn't we already have one of those? What? Did we get two of those? Oh, Rod of Mystery. Rod of Miracle. New weapon for her. I'll equip con uh, commons onto that later. Uh, uh, reward uh, for effort. And steel common. Golden frog gold common. What? Okay, one sec here. Items. Gold common Sid. Acquired in battle plus 30%. Oh, golden frog. Reward for effort. Okay. Double experience points. Cool. Double Erd Sid. Okay, cool. So those are two crafting recipes. Um, 
I don't know how many how many recipes do we have now? One, two. Are they in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not all of them, but that's a that's quite a few. I think I think there's an achievement for eight, isn't there? I don't want to go look into my achievements to show, but whatever. Uh, I don't know. We got nine recipes now. Um, items. What else was there? It was the gold common. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Uh, any other random treasure chests anywhere around here, hiding in the distance? Hmm. Doesn't appear to be. I'm gonna quickly swap out my commons for Zephy, and I will be right back. Damn it! It only has one neutral spot. Damn it. Oh well. Okay, uh, anyways, it looks like we're getting pretty far into this. I'm sorry this was a pretty story-heavy episode. Uh, not much battling going on. But, uh, next time we are gonna move back into Kodamare, and, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun moving on in the story. And, uh, figuring out what we need to do next. Yep, see you guys then. Save point. <laughs>